Hello, hello, hello. Praise the Lord. As I was seeking the Lord for the words for this week, the Lord initially gave me just one word, rescue. So I sought the Lord further and He spoke this to His people. My people, I have a rescue plan for you. Wow. My hand will rescue you. Look to me, whatever your situation may be at the moment, and I will know how to turn things around for you. If I can turn the hearts of kings, and if I can turn the direction of rivers, I can turn anything around for you. Hallelujah. Now, the meaning of the word rescue here can be to save someone from a dangerous, distressing, or depressing situation, or to set free someone from a danger, evil, trap, bondage, or siege. People of God, I have a good news for you today. God's hand will rescue you. God has a rescue plan for you, no matter what you go through at the moment. Now, I know that nowadays you hear these words rescue plan a lot in the news or economic stimulus package implemented by many governments in the world due to the economic downturn, loss of jobs, loss of source of income for many people in the world. Yeah, indeed, it is quite a depressing and anxious time for many people in the world. But I want to tell you something, fear not, because for each and every one of God's beloved, God has a specific rescue plan. God has a, res uh, a rescue plan for you. I want you to believe it. No matter what you go through, be it your financial trouble or health problem or any situation that you may be facing recently, God has a rescue plan for you. i tell you something. Nothing beats God's very own rescue plan for you. His hand is stronger than anyone else or any government of this world. After all, He is the creator of heaven and earth. So whatever area in your life that you need Him to rescue you, look to Him. Tell Him. Tell Him. Be it in your health, finance, marriage, career, business, even ministry, or even malicious words or false accusations that come against you recently. God's hand is stronger than anyone else on earth. If He can turn the hearts of kings and if you can turn the direction of rivers according to his wishes, nothing is impossible to him. Hallelujah. Let's go to the next slide right now. Now in Proverbs chapter 21, verse 1, New King James Version, it says, The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. The hand of the Lord. Like the rivers of water, he turns it wherever he wishes. So if the Lord can turn the heart of someone as powerful as a king those days, he can turn anything around for you. If the Lord can turn the direction of rivers just like that, he can turn anything around for you. Hallelujah. You see from this scripture here, you don't have to carry waters from one river and transfer the waters in another direction. That's very tedious, super tedious. Imagine that. Because if you look to him, he can just turn the direction of a river just like that. Look to him, your powerful God. Amen? Wow. If he can turn the heart of the king of Egypt, Pharaoh, to Joseph, if he can turn the heart of King Saul to David, if he can turn the heart of King Nebuchadnezzar to Jeremiah, if he can turn the heart of King Cyrus to the Jewish nation, the Jewish people, if he can turn the Roman persecutors to the early Christians those days, as you can see in the New Testament, there's nothing that God can never turn for you. He can turn anything to your favor, friends. He can turn anything to favor you, in other words. After all, He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is the same those days, in the days of Joseph, 
David, in the days of Jeremiah, in the days of the early Christians, he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He will do the same for you. So where in the Bible that says God uh, can rescue us? Where in the Bible that says about God's rescue? On, on what occasion that God has a rescue plan for his beloved? Now over here as a ministry of Triumph in Christ, TIC, we have always made it a point since day one that whatever we say or preach, it has to be backed up with the Word of God. So let's go to the Word of God for some examples. The first one here, you can see at the slide, Psalm 43, verse 1 to 3. The Lord knows how to rescue you. Hallelujah. I'm reading from two versions. New Living Translation first. Declare me innocent, the psalmist wrote. O God, defend me against these ungodly people. Rescue me from these unjust liars. For you are God, my only safe haven. Send out your light and your truth. Let them guide me. Let them lead me to your holy mountain, to the place where you live. New King James Version, same verses. Vindicate me, O God, and plead my cause against an ungodly nation. O deliver me from the deceitful and unjust man. For you are the God of my strength. O send out your light and your truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me to your holy hill and to your tabernacle. Now the word rescue here, or in New King James Version, deliver. These two words is palat in Hebrew. It means to carry away safely, to make away safely, or to make a way of escape safely. People of God, over here, the psalmist was going through a time of injustice against him. And he looked to God for God's rescue. And the Lord did. Maybe you too are going through a time whereby you are faced with injustice against you, or you have been facing a certain danger, or problem, or trouble, or somebody has taken advantage of you, shortchanged you, falsely accused you of something, or treated you unjustly. Now, the psalmist has an answer for you right now. Look to the Lord. Look to the Lord to rescue you. Look to the Lord to parlat you. That's the Hebrew word. Parlat you. To carry you away into safety. To make a way out for you. So if anyone has done harm against you, whether in words or deeds or actions, and you know you are innocent, don't return evil for evil. Your God is not dead. Don't retaliate. Not tit for tat like the, the world does. Not a tooth for a tooth. Not an eye for an eye. Because you are not fighting flesh and blood. But what you need to do is just take authority in Jesus' name. Take authority in the Spirit. Let the Lord be your vindication. Let the Lord be your defense. The Lord will know how to take over from there. Believe me this. He is not dead. He will know how to clear your name. He will know how to defend you. And if you are in trouble or you are in certain danger, He will know how to lift you away from that place of danger or trouble. He will know how to parlat you, lead you to a place of safety. Hallelujah. The next psalm here is Psalm 60, verse 4 to 5. Again, I read from two versions, New Living Translation and New King James Version. This is a midterm of David, a psalm of David. But you have raised a banner for those who fear you, a rallying point in the face of attack. Now rescue your beloved people. Answer and save us by your power. In New King James Version, it's written this way. You have given a banner to those who fear you, that it may be displayed because of the truth, that your beloved may be delivered, safe with your right hand, and hear me. Now, the word rescue here, or deliver, in New King James Version, is kalats in Hebrew. 
Here, kalats means to draw you out from trouble, to pull you out from danger. So you see, palat and kalats. The Lord will know how to palat you. The Lord will know how to kalats you. The Lord will know how to bring you out into safety. And the Lord will know how to bring you out from trouble and danger. Palats and kalats. Amen. Now, a banner here, if you look back at this slide here, a banner here is a symbol of God's victory. Victory over whatever in the world that tries to drown you or cool you down. After all, the Lord your God is Yahweh Nisi. The Lord is your banner. The Lord is your victory. Next slide here. Psalm chapter 60, verse 11 to 12. Again, I'm reading from two versions, New Living Translation and New King James Version. Oh, please help us against our enemies, for all human help is useless. With God's help, we will do mighty things, for He will trample down our foes. Now, you are fighting against the principalities and powers, people of God, as a believer in the new covenant. You are not fighting flesh and blood. Remember that. Give us help from trouble, for the help of man is useless. True God, we will do valiantly, for it is He who shall track down our enemies. Now, interestingly, the word help here, Ezra in Hebrew, from the word Ezra or Azar, means to aid you, to protect you, to surround you. People of God, not only the Lord has promised to aid you or to protect you, but the Lord is also, the, at the very definition of this word Ezer or Azar in Hebrew, the Lord is also here to surround you. He is surrounding you. So you need not be afraid because the Lord is surrounding you and He has sent His angels to encamp around you. Now, you will be looking at Psalm 60 just now. Now, there is a background in Psalm 60, written by King David himself. And you can see that in 2 Samuel chapter 10. Now, this is what happened. 2 Samuel chapter 10, verse 1 to 4, I am reading for you first. It happened after this, that the king of the people of Ammon died. And Hanun, his son, reigned in his place. Then David said, I will show kindness to Hanun, the son of Nahash, as his father showed kindness to me. Now, you see, David was wanting to show kindness to the son of king, Nahash, of Ammon, just as the father had showed kindness to him. So what did David do? So David sent by the hand of his servants to comfort him concerning his father, this king's father, this new king's father. And David's servants came into the land of the people of Ammon. So David sent his servants, his ambassadors, into the land of the people of Ammon just to comfort the king. Good intention, showed kindness, yes. And the prince of the people of Ammon then said to Hanun, their Lord, do you think that David really honors your father because he has sent comforters to you? Has David not rather sent his servants to you to search the city, to spy it out and to overthrow it? In other words, to overthrow you? So these people were instigating Hanun. And Hanun believed in them, unfortunately. Therefore, Hanun, instead of showing kindness in return, Hanun took David's servants, these ambassadors, shaved off half of their beards, cut off their garments in the middle at their buttocks, exposing their buttocks, and sent them away. Now, people of God, that was a real insult. Now, by the way, beard, those days were very precious to men. To touch their beard is a great insult. And for these people to just cut off the garments of these people, exposing their back, is another insult. To insult the servants or the ambassadors of David is to insult the King David himself. 
So as you look back at this slide, that is the background when Psalm 60 was written by David. Yeah? A kindness being shown, but returned a good or a kindness with insult. That was what David got in return. You see, David meant well for the Ammonites. As you can see here in 2 Samuel chapter 10, he sincerely showed kindness to the new king. But what did David get in return? The king of Ammon instead returned good with insult. People of God, to insult the servants of King David or the ambassadors being sent by King David, to shave off half their beard, to cut off the garments and exposing their back, their buttocks. Now that's an insult. To insult these servants of King David or ambassadors of King David is to insult King David himself. In 2 Samuel chapter 10, verse 6 to 8, when the people of Ammon saw that they had made themselves repulsive to David, insult to David, the people of Ammon, now not only they did what they did, which I've read just now, they did one more thing. The people of Ammon sent and hired the Syrians of Beth Rehob and the Syrians of Zobah, 20,000 foot soldiers, and from the king of Makkah, 1,000 men, and from Ishtok, 12,000 men. For what? To fight David. Now, when David heard of it, he sent Joab and all the army of the mighty men. Then the people of Ammon came out and put themselves in battle array at the entrance of the gate, ready to attack David and his nation. See, people of God, not only did the Amorites insult King David, they even began to hire their neighbors, the Syrians and others, to attack King David and Israel. In 2 Samuel chapter 10, verse 9 to 12, now this was what happened. When Joab saw that the battle line was against him before and behind, he chose some of Israel's best and put them in battle array against the Syrians. And the rest of the people he put under the command of Abishai, Joab's brother, that he might set them in battle array against the people of Ammon. So he said, if the Syrians are too strong for me, then you shall help me. But if the people of Ammon are too strong for you, then I will come and help you. Be of good courage. And let us be strong for our people and for the cities of our God. Now, mark the words here. And may the Lord do what is good in his sight. In other words, Joel and Abishai, they surrendered the whole matter to the Lord. They needed to defend themselves, yes. They needed to defend and protect the people of the nation. But they also said this, may the Lord do what is right, what is good. They were surrendering this whole situation, this injustice to the Lord. So looking back at the slide here in 2 Samuel chapter 10, verse 9 to 12, you see that they turned to the Lord. They turned to the Lord to do what is good in God's sight. God has become the judge. And you know what? Eventually, God vindicated them. God defended Israel. People of God, if you continue reading in this chapter, you will know the eventual end, the outcome, what happened. As Joab and Abishai surrendered the whole matter to the Lord and said to the Lord, O oh Lord, you do what is right in your sight. Yeah? Yeah, they needed to defend the people of their nation. But on top of that, more importantly, they surrender this whole matter to the Lord. The same thing, the same it is with us, with you and I. Whatever situation you may be facing, be it uh, attack of the enemy, plundering of the enemy, in your health, uh, in your career, in your business, 
in your family, in your marriage, in your finance, even in your God-given ministry. Surrender this whole matter to the Lord. The Lord will know how to rescue you. The Lord has a rescue plan, rescue package for you, specifically for you. The Lord knows what He's doing. He's not dead. Your part is to look to Him. Put all your trust in Him, no matter what people say, even if the world laughs at you. Your God is a Jehovah Nisi, Yahweh Nisi, the Lord, your banner that you have read just now. Now, the outcome in this chapter was that eventually all these kings saw that they were defeated by Israel. And when they saw that, they began to make peace with Israel. You see, the Lord knew how to take over. You can see all this. And eventually, there was peace. Eventually, these people stopped attacking and stopped bullying Israel. People of God, I want to just believe this together with you. I want to declare that no weapon that formed against you shall prosper. Every word that rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. Your righteousness come from Him. Yeah, no matter what trouble, no matter what danger you may be facing at the moment, the Lord will know how to palat and the Lord will know how to kalat you. Learn these two Hebrew words today. Palat and kalat. Amen. The Lord will know how to bring you into safety and the Lord will know how to bring you out from your danger and trouble. Whatever it is, there's nothing too difficult for God. If He knows how to turn the hearts of kings, if He knows how to turn the directions of rivers, He will know how to turn things around to favor you. Amen. I want to pray this prayer for you. Let's pray. Father God, I pray for God's people who are listening here today that no matter what they are going through in life at the moment, you, O Lord, will palat and kalat them. You, O Lord, will rescue them. Because you, O Lord, have a rescue plan for each and every one of them, specifically. And nothing beats your rescue plan. No man can do the same. And as long as your people look to you, and put their trust in you, O Lord, nothing would be impossible. And you can turn things around to their favor. In the name of Jesus, and everybody say, Amen.